Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Grey Matter. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different, where we talk about the differences between various threat actors. We'll be going over organized cyber gangs, advanced persistent threats, or APTs, hacktivists, insider threats, and script kitties. We'll be using real world examples and threat intel of various groups, their motives, and what really shines here are the various TTPs we'll go over. Those are the tactics, techniques, and procedures, which can be specific to a certain type of threat actor in the groups. We'll be using the information you can find on MITRE's website. As always, I'll add the links in the description with the associated news stories and references for further information. This should be fun, so let's jump right into it. Let's start with organized cyber gangs. Presently, the number one threat for most organizations is from criminals whose primary goal is financially motivated. When criminals are successful, cybercrime can be a goldmine, and the global damage of these acts reached six trillion in 2021. They could either be looking for direct cash and currency or data-rich organizations and businesses with digital information that can be sold or used as leverage. Things that cyber criminals steal are things like account credentials and personally identifiable information, or PII. These include credit card numbers, account numbers, and social security numbers. With digital crime, the risk is much lower, and there can be far greater rewards. It's lower risk because criminals can hide themselves and their activity and launder the money through cryptocurrencies. One notorious Russian cybercrime group is called Fin7. MITRE's website states that this threat group is financially motivated and has been active since 2013, primarily targeting the US retail and restaurant hospitality sectors. They often use point of sale malware. Since 2020, Fin7 has shifted their operations to a big game hunting approach that includes reveal ransomware and their own ransomware as a service. In 2021, Fin7 allegedly created a fake security firm called Bastion Secure, which disguised itself as a legitimate company. And the threat group hired researchers and tricked them into running actual ransomware attacks. They are thought to be the source of the software behind the Colonial Pipeline attack, along with having direct ties to the ransomware group Darkseid. Among the many victims of Fin7, some major players include Saks Fifth Avenue, Lord & Taylor, Omni Hotels & Resorts, Trump Hotels, Jason's Deli, Whole Foods, and Chipotle. Now that we're getting into the TTPs, specifically techniques, I'd like to mention that the MITRE ATT&CK framework is an amazing tool for defensive cybersecurity professionals, but it can also be used by the red team or even attackers themselves. TTPs are the tactics, techniques, and procedure groups, but we'll be sticking to just the techniques and only touching on a few specific procedures. If you're interested and would like to dive deeper into the, each of the techniques, you can check out different adversaries and all the details on MITRE's website. Some of the techniques we'll be talking about today will have a T for the technique with a set of numbers and a decimal, then followed by additional numbers, such as 001. When you see this, the 001 means that this is a sub-technique of the main. In the example on your screen, you'll see that this is the part with the red rectangle. The blue rectangle is the tactic for this CTP. Each technique will have one or more tactics associated with them, and there are currently 14 that include things like reconnaissance or lateral movement. These will indicate how far the attack has gone and can help the analyst anticipate what to do next. Lastly, there are the procedures in the yellow rectangle. These are specific ways that a threat actor may perform a technique, and we'll mention a few of these throughout the video. Most of the examples for each will have three TTPs to help you associate the common behaviors and motives based on that type of threat actor. On to the first technique TTP from Fin7. The first TTP we'll be talking about with Fin7 is T1583.001, which is acquire infrastructure domains in which Fin7 registered lookalike domains for use in phishing campaigns. This can be done to trick users into trusting a domain enough to click on a link or for Fin7 to host a command and control server. Next is T1204.001, user execution, malicious link, where Fin7 uses malicious links to lure victims into downloading malware. For this tactic, the threat actor may need the user to click on the malicious link, and this may lead to another execution technique that could include exploitation of a browser or application vulnerability. T1071, .004 is Application Layer Protocol, DNS. This is done by communicating using the DNS Application Layer Protocol in order to avoid detection. It can help blend into regular traffic. 
since DNS is so prevalent in the network, this makes it easy to communicate back to the C2. The way the defense would normally catch suspicious traffic is through the seam and firewall logs. The way that you protect against organized crime gangs and their attacks is to ensure that the network and endpoints are protected by good IDS and IPS systems and other response solutions. As we talked about it, FIN7's TTPs included links in getting users to click on things. This shows the importance of security awareness training and ensuring that your end users are vigilant. Next are APTs, or Advanced Persistent Threats, aka State Sponsored. The way we fight war has changed significantly, and there are an estimated 30 nations that are waging cyber warfare operations. These threat actors are motivated politically and are targeting against another's political, economic, military, and commercial infrastructure. Unlike organized crime, their funding is sponsored by a nation's government. But similar to organized crime, they steal and exfiltrate intellectual property and sensitive information, along with being involved in cyber espionage. If a country can get another's proprietary data from leading researchers, this can help benefit a country significantly. The example group I chose for this threat is relevant in the news right now, which is Russian group Cozy Bear, also known as APT-29, which is attributed to Russian's Foreign Intelligence Service, or SRV. Cozy Bear has operated since 2008 and often targets government networks in Europe and NATO member countries. It is thought that they compromised the Democratic National Committee starting the summer of 2015. In April 2021, the US and UK government stated that the solar wind supply chain attacks were related to Russia's SRV. Recently, Cozy Bear has been in the news with articles around Microsoft's 365 and exploiting the self-enrollment for MFA, also including Azure. The first TTP for Cozy Bear is T1560.001, and this is called Archive Collected Data, Archive via Utility. The utility is 7-zip, in which they compress stolen emails into password-protective archives prior to exfiltration. This is the way that the adversaries obfuscate information to minimize the amount of data sent over the network in order to evade detection from the defender. Next is T1547.009, which is boot or log on auto start execution, shortcut modification. And this is where Cozy Bear drops a Windows shortcut file for execution. For this TTP, adversaries may create or edit shortcuts to run a program during system boot or user login. This can be done to create a shortcut that masquerades and looks like a legitimate program. They may also edit the target path or entirely replace an existing shortcut. And this is done so that their malicious tool will be executed instead of the intended legitimate program when an unsuspecting user runs the program. Next is T1587.001 which is Develop Capabilities, Malware. This is where Cozy Bear has leveraged numerous pieces of malware that appear to be unique to Cozy Bear or made specifically for the group. This means that they're able to develop their own payloads, droppers, backdoors, etc. This means that the piece of malware will be used by that threat actor exclusively, along with it showing advanced capabilities. When trying to protect against APTs, it's important to identify and consider which assets in your organization would be appealing to a nation state. Understanding TTPs and having a security team with threat hunting capabilities will help curate strategies around these along with threat intel. Next is hacktivists. Hacktivists are often politically motivated and use hacking to make social change. They work quietly, but they often intend on bringing attention to an issue. Their tactics often include DDoS attacks with botnets and defacing corporate websites. They may even take over the Twitter and social media accounts of celebrities and businesses, all of which will identify with MITRE. One of the most widely known hacktivism groups is Anonymous, and there have been plenty of interesting events throughout the years. In 2008, Anonymous declared war on Scientology after an article on Gawker came out with the notorious video of Tom Cruise. In 2010, they also decided to aid WikiLeaks and attacked Visa, PayPal, and other companies when MasterCard chose to stop processing payments associated with the WikiLeaks website. Though they weren't affiliated, they are against censorship. One last notable early act by Anonymous was in 2012. Anonymous targeted the Westboro Baptist Church 
by encouraging others to spam phone calls and emails, and also bring down the website with DDoS attacks. Some prominent hacktivist TTPs include T1584.005, and that's Compromise Infrastructure, Botnet, where threat actors will compromise numerous third-party systems to form a botnet that can be used during targeting. Hacktivist groups may gather users to create large-scale DDoS attacks this way. T1586.001 is Compromise Accounts, Social Media Accounts. Threat actors will compromise social media accounts of large businesses or high-profile individuals. They may do this with social engineering, brute force, or even sim swapping in some cases. T1491.002 is defacement, specifically external defacement. This is when an adversary may deface systems external to an organization in an attempt to deliver a message. They may want to bring attention to the organization or government for recent actions. This could even be a setup for future attacks, such as drive-by compromise. Since a lot of these attacks involve attacking web services and breaking into social media accounts, a good security solution would have to be multi-factor authentication, or MFA, on all social media accounts, along with application firewalls and DDoS mitigation. Additionally, a good incident response plan could help recover quickly from an attack. Next is insider threats, and this is a complex and interesting topic. There is risk across the board, and this affects both the public and private domains of all critical sectors. This could be a person who the organization trusts and has access to sensitive information, or anyone with access to the network. It could also be a third party who has continuous access, like a vendor or repair person. CISA defines an insider threat as a threat that an insider will use his or her authorized access, wittingly or unwittingly, to do harm to the department's mission, resources, personnel, facilities, information, equipment, networks, or systems. And they can manifest as damage to the department through the following behaviors. Espionage, terrorism, unauthorized disclosure of information, corruption, including participation in transnational organized crime, sabotage, workplace violence, intentional or unintentional loss or degradation of departmental resources or capabilities. It's important to take note at the bottom, and you'll see that it says intentional or unintentional. This is because someone who is simply a threat doesn't mean that they themselves are planning to be or are inherently malicious. This could be done due to negligence or it could be accidental. Intentional threats aim to cause harm to an organization or personnel based on grievance of some sort. We won't be going over any specific groups, but let's talk about some TTPs related to insider threats and what they include. T1566.002, which is phishing, spear phishing link. This is when an adversary emails a malicious link in an attempt to gain access to a victim system. Since malicious files can be caught by defenses, spear phishing may involve social engineering techniques, such as posing as a trusted source to trick the user to click on the link or perform an action. Next is T0847, which is replication through removable media. It's been said many times, don't insert an unknown USB into a computer. That's because adversaries can infiltrate an organization this way, even if the network is air-gapped. We saw this with Stuxnet, and also the malware called Conflicker, and W32 Ramnet, and these systems weren't even connected to the internet. Isolated networks are safer, but an insider threat can still find their way in. T1011 is exfiltration over other network medium. This could be when a knowing insider threat moves sensitive information from the network, such as a Wi-Fi connection, cellular data connection, Bluetooth, or another radio RF channel. Since this is done when adversaries have sufficient access or proximity, the connection might not be secured or defined as well in the primary internet connection. So how do we protect against insider threats? The ways to protect against an insider threat is to lock down file access and use least privilege and monitor anomalous user behavior, as you can catch things with visibility. A company should also have a firewall and media access control. It's also important that employees receive regular training on cybersecurity awareness to minimize the possibility of accidental errors. Have a positive security-oriented company culture and that may be the only way that prevents employees from becoming accomplices. When an outsider threat actor knows that an organization is underpaying so much 
that a $5,000 bribe could influence an employee to make a very ethical decision. That's a problem. The fifth and last threat type we'll talk about today is script kiddies. Script kiddies are amateur hackers of sorts, and they're individuals who run exploits without knowing really what they even do. Though the name sounds demeaning, these individuals can still cause significant damage. They typically have little experience and have found tools online written by other people. Script kiddies usually are not involved in any type of organization, simply finding resources online and seeing how something works, though they may do this for personal acclaim or in order to troll. Some of the exploits they launch may not work, and they may not know the depth of what they're even doing. Many of the tools in the popular pen testing OS, Kali Linux, could be used by a script kitty. Most of the time, the attacks are phishing and DDoS related. For these TTPs, we'll stick with T1583.005, Acquire Infrastructure, Botnet. Though we referenced it before, it's fitting for how script kitties might get their resources. These may be used for their large phishing or DDoS attacks. T1190, Exploit Public Facing Application. SQL injection scripts are floating around online, and a script kitty may copy and paste it into a search box of a website to test it. In one research publication, Hans Holm and Theodor Somestad tested over 1,224 exploitation attempts, and only eight of the attempts succeeded all of which are related to a single Metasploit exploit module. They found that server-side attacks are too complicated for novices who lack the skill or knowledge of fine-tuning their attacks. So how do we protect against these attacks? Since phishing kits are popular among script kitties, it's good to have email monitoring that can filter and help protect against these threats. It's also important to always have a good EDR capabilities and always provide security awareness training for end users Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned more about these types of threat actors, along with some of the things you'd expect them to do. Please leave a like and drop any questions or suggestions down in the comment section below. Thanks.